<laughs> I feel so high right now, and it's funny because I'm in the sky, and I'm literally high. It's funny, right? Hello everyone, I'm Leader of Luxonape. That was a very bad intro, but this is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode of which, we had one of the biggest catchphrase awakening moments ever in Let's Plays, and it was awesome. In this episode, we're going to open up by getting these three goddess cube chests, which I can now mark all at the same time because of the magical ability to create multiple beacons that we actually have, which is all cool and stuff. And other than that, I guess, it, well, really, I need to get myself a new shield because I managed to break it by trying to shield bash an explosion last episode. And we're gonna get a new shield and then head into the Lanier Mining Facility, which is really cool. This is the Heart Metal, which is the Treasure Metal, but it works with hearts. Come to think of it, the Treasure Metal is probably the only reason I got that epic Golden Skull drop from the Technoblin with the Heart and the Golden Skull last time. But that does not really matter, as the Heart Metal will actually help me a lot in this dungeon, since, at least in the failed recording of this I had, I almost died several times. But unfortunately, well, actually very fortunately, I can't almost die right now because I am needing to head over the entire sky in order to get to those other two islands and I don't really feel like, well, I don't feel like putting you through the trouble of having to watch me go through the entire half of the sky, so I am going to do the crazy and cut something. I don't know why I said do the crazy. That's a reference to some countdown that I saw recently about Mega Man. I don't remember exactly what, though. Oh well. Jeez, even using every speed flying technique in the book, that still took a couple minutes to get there. And unfortunately, I actually missed the thing. I'm gonna roll into this tree, see if it drops anything. Nope, not even any bugs. This sign says that this island apparently belongs to Beetle, and this is the dock that he parks the air shop at, which is actually kind of interesting. But more importantly is what is in the treasure chest that I intend to get, uh, that I intend to get because I said in the treasure chest. That doesn't really count as a pun. It's just stupid. Not, not, puns are not stupid. Missing the platform twice is stupid, but puns are definitely not stupid. I just meant that that wasn't a pun and it was stupid because it wasn't a pun. If it was a pun, then it would definitely not be stupid because puns are the opposite of stupid, I think. I don't know. I'm not exactly the opposite of stupid, so I can't really talk much about what is and what is not stupid, but what is definitely not stupid is the piece of heart you get from this. Two to go for another heart container, which I really, in Link, really, I'm really, I, I'm really Link, really, Beacons, what are you doing? I am really starting to need more heart pieces, but when we return from Lanayru Province, yet again, after completing the Lanayru Mining Facility, we are going to start working on the Gratitude Crystal side quests, and don't worry, you can get plenty of heart pieces and stuff from those. So we're not going to be without a lot of hearts for very long, especially since we already have almost half of them, and we are going to with the heart container that we're presumably going to get from the next dungeon, which is double great, fantastic, awesome something. So this island, I actually really liked how the game handles those plants that were too far away from the camera to load properly. They look loaded wavily, so it actually looks cool. That might have just been what I saw. But either way, um, this island, you just have to blow that up to get the chest. But anyway, yeah, Gratitude Crystal side quests. There are several other rewards besides just the Gratitude Crystals, and some of those, indeed, will help you at least get pieces of heart. Now, I would ordinarily go to Skyloft and show buying another shield and all the stuff, but the thing is, it's really just the same as the other shield that we already bought. I'm not going to do anything else in Skyloft there, because the failed recordings show that there is actually nothing else I can do that I want to do at the time, so I am going to see you back in front of the mining facility in what is going to be a very, very long time for me, but I hope considerably less than the 10 minutes it's going to be for me, for you. Because, you know, I have to fly across the sky, I have to go to Skyloft, and then I have to fly across the sky again to get to Lanayru, because I have to be doing this with the Pillar of Light that's the furthest away from Skyloft. Happy times are ahead for me, and 
Good ones for you, because I'm going to probably be complaining real hardcore at the end of this. So, hi, hey, hello. Welcome to the entrance of the Lani Room Mining Facility. When I first stopped and said I was going to cut the video after getting the last Goddess Cube, I'd been recording for approximately seven and a half minutes. I've now been recording for 17! Of course, the fact, the fact that I actually landed at the wrong bird statue, and I had to go through the Temple of Time again to get back to the right one, didn't help much, but still, they made me spend way too much time in the sky there. But, at any rate, this is the Lani Roo Mining Facility. It is a facility where they mine Lani Roos, which is obvious, right? It should be obvious, right? It has to be obvious. It can't not be obvious that they would mine Lani Roos at the Lani Roo Mining Facility, right? So, this dungeon, in general, it's a very abnormally constructed dungeon. Instead of having a mini-boss and stuff, it mainly consists of you going through several main rooms with time shift stones where they dump a crap load of these arachnids on you. Their larva monster is said to live for a thousand years during which they're continuously growing. Though the larva is small in size, it is quite ferocious and often found in swarms beneath the sand. It tends to leap towards moving objects such as yourself. These guys are pathetic. They're weaker than keys. They will always die in one hit from anything that could possibly resemble a weapon. Like, watch. Watch this. I can sweep through it with the beetle. They're so weak. So yes. You're going to be fighting a good two to three hundred of these guys throughout the dungeon. As opposed to having a legitimate mini boss. There are several other enemies that actually pose a threat to you in the place. It's just that you're not going to go very far without finding an arachna or eight. Good job, Link. You didn't even get six feet from... He didn't even get his own height away from the edge before he fell in. That's what I'm saying. You have until the bottom of the shield, if you're using the wooden shield, hits the ground. Before you will sink in. Uh, that's nice. I actually completely replenished the stamina meter of the cutscene, I think. Now, you may have noticed that there was an identical switch on the other side. And since there's only one door in this room, that switch can't do anything, right? Well, that's not right. Because it's wrong. Because you saw that grate there with the treasure chest, that hitting the other switch will indeed open that door and let you get the chest. I I'm going to have to remember that it's only been less than 10 minutes of me recording now. I'm going to I'm going to keep looking at the clock, seeing it's over 20 minutes, and stop already. Uh, okay, that statue was already blown up. I didn't need to do that even. I'm going to keep looking at the clock, see that it's been like 20 minutes, freak out, and end the episode early, give you absolutely nothing to watch for the next day or so, depending on what I record after this, if I can record anything. I don't know. So yeah, I I need to remember it's been I'm 20 minutes is 10 minutes for me. I've been I've done 10 minutes of not of stuff that was cut out. That's actually a lot less difficult to remember than I thought it would be because it's 10 minutes. I Even I can subtract 10 from stuff. So this should give you a red rupee, of course. You're gonna see there are a few red rupee chests that have blue rupees in them. Excuse me, I'm saying that right away. So, yeah, my, in the failed recording, I did the failed recording of this and the next episode. So, I already been through most of Lanier Mining Facility already very recently, and I know most of the stuff I need to do, like to remember to tattle on the Staldra this time. A snake monster from before the dawn of time, three bone-plated heads and a thirst to cause pain keep writhing even beyond death. My analysis shows that to defeat the cursed snake, all three of its heads must be simultaneously destroyed. So yeah, we're not going to go with the shield bash strategy, since it's going to break my shield again, but the random flail around and hope you can hit all three heads before they start regenerating strategy. Because that's what has always worked for me somehow. And, of course, which is very nice, they give you red rupees. Which is very nice. I think I just said that. There we go. I don't know, it's probably wasn't intended for you to be able to defeat them that way. But that's the way I always do it. So that's the way I always am going to do it. Um... I feel the need to say it, 
I really do, but nobody is going to get the reference in the first place probably, so I'm just going to not say it. Anyway, this room that you are going to be of the seeing momentarily, momentarily, yes, momentarily, this is the main main room of the mining facility. However, we're barely going to see any of it this pass through of the room, possibly even this episode, depending on where I decide to cut it off. What we want to do is bomb those boxes so Link can jump over there, since they're... Spoiler alert, there's nowhere you can go on the other side. There's an electro shoe here. No, 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 no. See, that happens automatically. Just the act of shaking off a choo-choo is going to make you thrust attack when you're done. That's going to drop a jelly blob that's going to fall off the edge. I think it actually did. It's so annoying, you take half a heart of damage that you never would take if the sword controls are fixed slightly. But this is actually a new enemy, it's not just a yellow keys, it's a thunder keys. It's basically a keys that can generate its own electricity. So, yeah, everything is, again, everything is electricity to kick in the dungeon. Luckily, I was able to somehow wipe them both out with not only one shot, but by accident, when I wasn't trying to kill either of them, just take my sword out. So, we're not going to bother... I'm, I'm not going to get myself hurt by their electricity just to show that they can generate electricity. There's this whole thing where, it, in order to... I think, I think there's actually a video about Let's Playing where you have to... Apparent, apparently, I have to make you trust me, or you're not going to like these videos. Um... That's... See, that is going to be a lot harder in practice than it sounds in my head and on the non-existent paper that is also in my head. I have paper in my head. That kind of explains a lot about me if I have paper instead of a brain. So I'm not going to say anything else about that. I think it would be a good idea. But new enemy! Again, this is a Froak! An odd creature that is cowardly by nature will expose an array of densely packed defensive spikes and approach to provoke. You defeat a zero to sunny Okay. So, a froak is very interesting. You can't touch it when it has spikes out. But when the spikes aren't out, hitting it will cause it to explode. I have no idea where they thought of this thing, but it's like actually genius. I don't know, it's just something. And it is something that I very like. It, whoops. The froaks are used very well in puzzles where they're used in puzzles. Bad choo-choo. See, the thrust, it's its automatic. Simply getting caught by the choo-choo gives, you will automatically lose half a heart if it's yellow. If it's any of the other colors, you're not going to take any damage at all if you know how to shake a remote properly. But, ah, uh, and I missed the bomb. Yeah, this is, if this is going, if my practice, if not the practice run, if the failed recording run of this, was any indication, I'm going to be doing awfully. Granted, I didn't have the audio on my TV on, my shield almost broke again actually, because I couldn't hear any of the cues when I was trying to shield bash stuff, but that was cool. I, accidental jump attack is actually kind of epic, even if I was just hitting a barrel. Yeah. Basically, I did really bad without the audio, but with a really good warm-up to the dungeon. Imagine how bad I'm going to do with the audio, and how how desynced the audio is going to sound. Because I'm recording game audio from my capture card, and it's going to pick up on the microphone a little bit now that I'm starting to use Audacity, so there's going to be an audio syncing problem. So you're probably going to hear echoes of the game audio, like, for a lot. But another new enemy is the Beemos, so it's actually not a new enemy at all, but an old face, or an old one with a new face. And by a new face, I mean old face, since this is the first game in the timeline, but I don't really want to go into that that much. It's an ancient security mechanism, the weak point is the eye, as usual. It's also a weapon that fires a focused energy beam, again, as usual. Phi calculates a 100% failure rate on any attempt to strike the eye with the sword while it is still on top of the pedestal. So you have to either lower its head, or hit it with a projectile of some kind. Lowering its head is always the easy option, because you just cut sideways on those. 
it does help. They drop blue rupees most of the time. Conveyor belt. Shield bashing the beam back at it. Does help quite a lot. Because it will stun it, and when it's stunned, it can't kill you. I think that's a pretty good reason. So, um, Link, don't get shocked too badly here. Alright, I have a feeling there is something up this ladder that I need to get. It might be a minor chest. Oh, it's a switch. That's probably important. Yes, it is. It opens the way out. I think that is very important, come to think of it. So, what we want to do is, um, not get electrocuted and start reverse dry humping the universe again. Um, I'm behind the electric fence. That's not a good thing. But, these conveyor belts, very conveniently, besides having things that do a whopping quarter or heart of damage to you on them, they have random stamina fruits placed out. Literally, you run, and you pick up the stamina fruits. This is another interesting -er theme of this dungeon. Running on conveyor belts. I don't know. So, this this is actually not the way out of the room. This is a different door. Um, I, Vimos will turn around toward you if you cut part of the body off. Oh, that was a red rupee chest. This is going to have a blue rupee in it, isn't it? No, it's actually a red rupee. I know there's at least there's at least one red rupee chest in here that does have a red rupee, uh, blue rupee in it. So I'm not as crazy as you probably think I am. I'm more crazy than you probably think I am. But not in this case. So we got another locked door here and another conveyor belt that you have to run against. This one, we we've, we're stepping up in the world. We've got to climb up a hill. While we avoid weird spiky things and collect stamina fruits. There we go. At least, the sh at least I'm shield bashing better than I was last episode. I only took one hit, and that was from the Staldra, which are really good at faking you out with their shield ba with shield bashing. Last time, the shield this shield was almost broken already because I made the mistake of shield bashing Beamos. I was t I I gave up on shield bashing them because I couldn't hear when they were about to launch the beam, so I just tanked the hit every single time. In retrospect, it was probably a bad idea, I'd, since I almost died several times, but, you know. So outside of this time shift area, we've got some Deku seeds, and we've got a Froak. We've also got something suspiciously bombable looking there. Yep, you use the blow up enemies as a puzzle-solving tool to explode things for you. This is something that they've done before with bomblings and uh, the real bomb chew enemies in Twilight Princess and Majora's Mask. I think there was something involving exploding enemies. Maybe Armos. The Armos in Ocarina of Time. There was something else in... The, I think even Wind Waker had something like that. But I still love using explodable enemies as a way to do stuff. But without a mini boss, we did get the dungeon item, which is the Gust Bellows. Which is pretty much an endless supply of blowing air that you can use to blow things away. So in other words, it's pretty much my mouth, but in a handy little cool looking design backpacky form. Don't really know where I was going with that besides the self-deprecating humor thing. So, Arachna are so pathetic that you can do that and they make an adorable little getting blown away sound whenever you do it. They're really, really, really pathetic enemies. Which makes me not mind when they throw them at you by the dozen. And as soon as I say that, I get hurt almost twice by them. So I, I really shouldn't talk about anything anymore. But what you did get is a goddess plume that is in here. I think I missed this chest in the failed recording since I didn't see it somehow. Don't ask me how I missed it. Um... But what you do get is completely fenced in by these spikes that pop up out of the ground. You have to find your way to a ladder. They will hurt you if you touch them. I probably didn't need to say that. I I need to give you some credit as people who potentially have who I have to assume have never played the game before. Since it's it's an educationable let's play. I have to I have to assume that you have not played the game before. So, I actually 
bring something mildly teaching to this Let's Play instead of just raging at stuff. Which, I have to admit, is more fun than actually teaching. But, you know, I have to pretend that it isn't. So, if in case you ever want to return for whatever reason, you get that. I, of course, as soon as I say that, I fall off. So I do actually have to use the thing. It would really stink if I had to climb up through the room again. But, considering as this is where I ended the last episode off, I am way ahead of time, because I got lost a little bit in the failed recording. So, yeah, I ended the failed recording here at getting Gust Bellows. But since I want to get this dungeon done in two episodes, we are going to do the thing with the thing. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. We're going to do the thing with the thing. So, you don't want to do that. I did this several times in the failed recording. I, I need to stop referring to the failed recording, but it was, it was, I scrapped it because of commentary, not because of anything else. I just didn't talk very well. But what you have to do is there's actually nothing in the room that the Gus Bellows can help you solve. You have to go back a room where there is considerably larger amount of, amount, amounds, amounds, makes me think of the almond candy, the mounds. It's actually very good. I like the man with the fair almond joy, I think. No, I, I don't remember which is the one I like better. But, there is sand over here, and if you get rid of that, you reveal like 30 arachnas, and they drop jelly blobs, which is indeed their treasure. So, I'm going to be way over on jelly blobs, but I still haven't gotten a single monster claw yet this entire Let's Play. Uh, one good thing of having to go through the Temple of Time again was that I got a ton more ancient flowers just based on the ones that I pass so I should be fine with them for a while but the monster claws I would have so much less problems with the shield if I just got the monster claws that I needed I only needed one out of the dozens of Keiths we've defeated so far you'd think that at least one would drop their treasure which is more common may I add you add you I what, what should I add you to? Um, I would like to be able to add you to my list of subscribers, so, you know, that was subtle and everything of a hint. But, yes, I, I... I still cannot understand why I haven't gotten a single Monster Claw yet, not even from a treasure chest as well. Also, keep in mind that Arachna do sometimes come out of those sand piles. It's not always money. Then again, oh, also, when an Arachna grabs onto you, it's just like a weak... Choo Choo grabbing onto you like that, but they can kind of gangbang you, and it's not fun unless you're into that sort of thing. Believe it or not, I'm not into that sort of thing. Just just saying that now. So, yeah, these frokes are kind of pointless. They're... You're, you've got Froak in your name. Why can't you guys be as chill as Froakie? You can't just be sitting there just like all... Yeah, I'm a frog. I evolved into this giant ninja who's going to be in Super Smash Brothers. Froakie's much cooler than Froakes. Even if you can use them in, in a puzzle that involves using their bodies as living bombs, they're still not as cool as Froakie. I'm sorry. I, I am not really sorry. You're not real. Then again, Froakie's also not real. But he's so cool that it was, it's just real whenever you use your Froakie in battle. I don't know where I'm going with this. Yes, I did. Ch I was. I was considering choosing the grass starter for once in X and Y. X is my main one, and then I saw the second evolutions, and I became Team Froki and never looked back. Yeah. All right. So here we've got a Beemos that took out much more of my shield meter than would have been acceptable, and yeah, they can move. And that's not fun. No, it is not. It is, it is none of the funs. I think I'm thinking we should end this off as soon as we get out of this room, since it has been a while. There's another new enemy there. I'm going to hope to ignore it. These things are just like little wind mills, I guess. The, there's a pinwheel thing before. But I, I do like these moving platforms. Thanks a lot, Link. Guess, guess how far back it's going to put me. Uh, this, this wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Last time, uh, in the failed recording, it 
put me back to the beginning of this room when I fell off over here. I don't know why this is any different, but I still greatly prefer it to... Okay, that was creepy thing in the background. I still greatly prefer it to the alternative, which was completely having to redo the room. But whatever, there's a monster horn in there. I'm... Kind of waiting for the time when the monster horns become obtainable. These little bombs are going to follow me until I cut them in the direction indicated. But I think they just blew up, which is cool. So, up this way, there's another Beemos. Ow, nice. I'll, I'll give the thing credit, even if it is mechanical, I'll give it credit for sniping you that well. That's still not nice. So then. Uh, this was supposed to be a difficultly designed security system that only the ancient robots could figure out. Literally, if you had better lungs than Link, you could just blow on the pinwheel until the door opened. That's all I'm going to say about that. So here you do have a little bit of a micro mini boss with two Staldra at once. So you might need to beat one of them the legit way. At dying is not the legit way. I actually needed to use a fairy. I, I, I did die. I needed to use a fairy at some point in the failed recording, too, which kind of worries me. It was mostly the result of the bad shield bashing and not being able to shield bash without having to go back for yet another shield later. But, yeah. All I'm going to say about what's going to happen in the next episode, I am going to rage a lot when this thing touches the time shift stone. Till then... I'm leader of Luxony, kind of regretting the fact that I have to ponder on the fact that I have that to look forward to at the beginning of the next recording, and I, signing off.